1 Corinthians chapter 12, 2 of 2, continued, Members of the human body compared to gifts of the Holy Spirit. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ, 1 Corinthians 12 12. In the consideration of this passage, let us drop down to include two other verses, but now are they many members, yet but one body, verse 20, and, now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular, verse 27. Paul is using a comparison to the human body, as one body has many members performing different functions, so the members of the church need to perform different functions. The human body has many members, hundreds, even thousands of members. In the church, the body of Christ, there are many gifts, hundreds, probably thousands of gifts. On a hunting trip I stepped off a cliff and hurt my foot. When I went to the doctor, I asked him how many bones were in the foot. He told me there were 27. I said, I think I hurt all 27 of them. No, he said, you hurt only one. Now I tell you, I may have hurt only one of them, but my whole foot was painful. When one member suffers, they all suffer. The body is composed of many members. There are the bones and muscles, the glands and the organs, the nerves and the blood vessels. On one occasion, after I had spoken at a baccalaureate service, in a prep school in Atlanta, Georgia, I went to a doctor's home for dinner. He asked me if I knew which was the most important part of my body while I had been speaking. I guessed it was my tongue. No, he said, the most important part of your body today, was a member that no one was conscious of. It was your big toe. If you didn't have a couple of big toes, you wouldn't have been able to stand up there at all. I have thought a great deal about that. Suppose when I would go somewhere to preach, my big toe would rebel and say, look here, I refuse to go. I've been going with you for years and you have never called attention to me. People see your lips and tongue in your face, but they don't ever see me. Why don't you ever take off your shoe and sock, and let them get a look at me sometime? Well, now, I don't think folk would be interested in seeing my big toe, it is not very attractive. In fact, it is unattractive, yet it is an important part of my body. There are many members in the body of Christ. Some of them we don't ever see. Some of the most important members in churches where I have served, have been men and women whom the church knew nothing about. They weren't the officers or the Sunday school teachers, or the soloist or the preacher. They were quiet, unobtrusive folk who prayed, and who exercised their gift of faith. Now how does a person get into this body of believers? For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12:13. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who puts us into the body of believers, and who gives a gift to each particular member. We are to function in that body, and we are to use that gift. It may be that we are the big toes, with an unseen but important ministry. We each have a gift, and we are each to function. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? 1 Corinthians 12 14-17. Suppose there would be a return of the gift of tongues, such as there was, in the apostolic times. It still would be true, that not everyone would speak in tongues the analogy is to our bodies. Our bodies are not all tongue. I have met a few people, who seem to be all tongue, but they are exceptions. The Holy Spirit is not going to give the same gift to every person. Like the human body, there need to be eyes and ears, and feet and hands. Different people are given different gifts by the Spirit of God, so that the body of Christ can function in all its necessary capacities. But now hath God set the members every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him, 1 Corinthians 12 18. God is the one who sovereignly gives the gifts, and he gives them as it pleases him. He is the one to be pleased, you see. These gifts are in the body so that the body can function.
A man in one of my congregations had an unusual gift. He was not an usher, but he would stand in the back of the church, and if there was any kind of disruption or commotion in the service, he would take care of it. If a baby was crying in the church, one of the ushers might ask the mother to leave, and antagonize her by doing so. But this man had a gift. He would go to the mother and play with the baby a few minutes, and then say, by the way, we have a nursery here. Would you like me to take the baby down there or show you where the nursery is? The mothers always responded. He just had a way of handling people. As I told him, he had a rare gift and one that is needed in the church. You may be surprised that something like that is a gift. Of course, it is a gift, and so is cooking or baking or sewing. We can get some idea about gifts, from incidents in the Bible. Ananias and Sapphira had gifts, but they had not submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and their gifts were not functioning for the Lord. So they fell down dead before Simon Peter. They couldn't exist in the early church. They had gifts, but they were not exercising them as they should. There was a woman by the name of Dorcas, who had a gift of sewing, and she used that gift, under the Lordship of Christ. She exercised it in the will of God. When she died, Simon Peter went to Joppa, and the widows had a regular fashion show, as they showed Peter the dresses that Dorcas had made. The reason they wore them, was that these were all that those poor women had to wear. Dorcas and her gift were important in the early church, so much so, that Peter raised her from the dead. She had a gift that was still needed. Simon Peter had a gift. He was the great preacher on the day of Pentecost. God used him mightily. When God no longer needed his gift, he died, he was not raised from the dead. My friend, the Spirit of God is sovereign in all this. He is the one who determines what is important and what is not important. If God has called you to bake a cake or to sew a dress, then do it. That is a gift. The Holy Spirit wants us to use our gifts, and to bring them under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body, and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary, 1 Corinthians 12 19-22. You and I, need each other, and the Lord wants to use all of us. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another, 1 Corinthians 12 23-25. You have seen some little, underdeveloped boy taking exercises and lifting weights. He is trying to develop some muscles and trying to develop some strength. Just so, God pays attention to the body of believers, so that the small gifts are developed. I think there are many gifts in the church which need to be developed today. Perhaps you feel that you are not doing anything for the Lord. One of the most thrilling things in the world, especially if you are a young person, is to find out what God wants you to do, and where He wants you to go. What a thrill, what an experience, what an adventure to find out what gift God has given you. Paul goes on to say that this should all be done, so that there is no schism in the body. The members should all have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. 1 Corinthians 12 26. My friend, there is no place for jealousy in the church. We all are members of the same body. If one is honored, we all receive that honor. And when one member is suffering, we all suffer with him. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, 1 Corinthians 12 27-28. What about the gift of helps? Oh, what a wonderful gift that is. If you have it, I hope you are exercising it. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, 
Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? 1 Corinthians 12 29-30. Some of these gifts have disappeared. They are not in the church, because they are not needed in the church today. There are no longer apostles in the church, nor are there prophets, in the sense of being able to foretell future events. Paul also makes it very clear, that all people do not have all the gifts. Are all apostles? The obvious answer is, no. Do all work miracles, or do all have the gift of healing, or do all speak with tongues? The answer is, no, they do not, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you, a more excellent way, 1 Corinthians 12 31. Although the Holy Spirit is sovereign in bestowing gifts, we have the right to ask God for the gift we want. He says we are to covet earnestly the best gifts, not having been brought up in a Christian home, I had no Christian training at all. When I went away to seminary, I didn't even know the books of the Bible. I had graduated from college, where the emphasis was placed on the intellectual and the philosophical, and I was trying to be that kind of preacher. Then I heard Dr. Harry Ironside speak. He explained scripture in a simple manner, and I heard him make the statement, put the cookies on the bottom shelf, so the kitties can get them. And I remembered that my Lord had said, feed my sheep, John 21 16. He hadn't said, feed my giraffes. So I went to God and prayed, Lord, I want to be that kind of preacher. Later, I substituted for Dr. Ironside, at Dallas Theological Seminary, and when he passed on, the seminary's president, Dr. Lewis Sperry Chafer, called me on the phone. He asked, would you take Dr. Ironside's lectures here at the seminary? I could hardly answer him clearly, and I almost rudely hung up the phone. I dropped to my knees, and confessed that I wept as I thanked God. I said, Lord I prayed that you would let me teach like Dr. Ironside, and you have answered my prayer. I coveted earnestly the best gift, and he answered my prayer. Although I am no Dr. Ironside, how I thrill today at the experience and the privilege of teaching the Word of God. My friend, you have the right to ask God for the best gift. Several folk have written this to me, I certainly hope you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, for your information, I have received it, not as an experience or something I received after I was saved, but the Holy Spirit has put me into this body of believers, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Also these folks say, we hope that you will speak in tongues. Well, my prayer is that I can speak in the English language a little better. Why? For the simple reason that the gift God gives us is for the profit, the wealth, of the church. Regardless of the gift God gives to you, the purpose of it is to be helpful to other believers, other members of the body.